A Rowan County man is charged with abuse of a corpse and tampering with evidence after a body was found inside a box near Louisville. A man breaks into a southern Kentucky home and the whole thing is caught on video. Tonight we're talking to the homeowner who says she no longer feels safe in her own. The case of the missing Kentucky bourbon, what it can teach small businesses and the rest of us about security coming up. This is WQIT News at 5.30. Good evening to you. Police say he put a man's body in a wooden box and then dropped it off in Louisville. Tonight, an eastern Kentucky man is facing charges in connection with that gruesome crime. Police arrested 39-year-old Derek Rourke yesterday. They charged him with abuse of a corpse and tampering with physical evidence in the death of Jeffrey Kingston. Tonight, WKYT Sam Smith is talking to the woman who lives in Rourke's former home. Sam has our top story at 5:30. This is a case that stands out to investigators. A body was found inside a wooden box in the Louisville area earlier this month. Derek Rourke of Rowan County has been charged in this case. He could have easily called 911 like everyone else, but he chose not to. Investigators say the victim died from a heroin overdose. They say Rourke revived him using CPR, but when a witness tried to call 911, Rourke stopped her. She was not allowed to contact 911. The uh, Mr. Rourke did not let her contact 911. Rourke turned himself in to police yesterday in Mount Sterling. We made a request to speak to Rourke to hear his side of the story, but he declined our request for a jailhouse interview. Brooke Shellebarger lives at Rourke's former Moorhead home and rents from a Laura Rourke. She hopes he's not guilty of this crime. Yeah, I hope it's not really, that's not really what happened. It's like, that's horrible to spend your life in jail over something like that. Investigators believe Rourke covered up the overdose death because he didn't want word to get out, fearing it would hurt his business. The victim was working with Rourke to remodel apartments. Well, it's unusual in the fact that he was in a box. I mean, I'm going to be just, I'll be blunt. In Rowan County, Sam Smith, WKYT. And this morning, Rourke was transferred from the Montgomery County Jail to the jail in Louisville. A man accused of stabbing and killing a Navy veteran was in court today. Daniel Martin is charged with murder and tampering with physical evidence in the death of Jonathan Scalf. During today's hearing, a Paris police officer testified in the case. The officer says that Scalf was stabbed 13 times with a steak knife, which punctured his ribs, lungs, and heart. The officer says police have not found that knife. Scalf's family says Scalf and Martin were fighting over Scalf's estranged wife. Why does he deserve to live and to even be caged up when my brother was just trying to take care of his baby and his daughter, I mean, and support her? And they took, he took his life for no reason, for jealousy. The judge found probable cause for a trial and weighed Martin's case to the grand jury. Scalf's family has set up a Facebook page called Justice for Jonathan to raise money for Scalf's funeral expenses. A Southern Kentucky family says they are shaken after someone broke into their home. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Laurel County. The family captured the break-in on video. In that video, you can see a man walk up to the front door of the house and knock. The man comes back later and forces his way through the basement door. The next time you see him, he's carrying a radio, Xbox, and jewelry out of that home. The homeowner says she and her two-year-old daughter weren't home at the time. The thief stole about $2,500 worth of items from the family. I go to work. My husband works. Um, we, our money is to pay bills and occasionally buy something for ourselves or for one another. And to have someone come in and feel that they have the right to take that it's, it's devastating and selfish and it's sad. State police hope the surveillance video will help them catch that thief. In Madison County, two men are in jail charged with drug trafficking. Police arrested 19 year old Michael Porcelli and 21 year old Dominic Pulliam. Police say they found 228 grams of heroin, 41 grams of marijuana, cash, and a pistol at a home on Tates Creek Avenue. The drug task force director said, quote, This is just another example of out of town folks setting up shop to sell significant amounts of heroin in Madison County. 
A case is still under investigation. And in Franklin County, a hoarding case has been presented to the county attorney. Deputies say they found 19 animals living in horrible conditions at the home off Jones Lane. They say many of them were starving and caked in filth. The county attorney will now decide if charges will be filed. The shelter says they found foster homes for all of the animals, including the boa constrictor and an albino python. Another soggy and dreary day in the bluegrass, but it looks like we might have some relief, a break from all this rain coming. Just in time, Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey's tracking some cooler weather, too, moving in. Yeah, temperatures ready to take a little dive as we work our way into later tonight and certainly over the next few days. But it comes with some very nice weather, as Sam was just talking about. What we're seeing now is a lot better than what we were talking to you about 24 hours ago. Temperatures are into the 60s, mix of sun and some clouds. Yes, we've got the spotty shower or two out. Out there, but overall, it's a partly sunny sky that is showing up. And look at Defender. Uh, our network of radars not picking up on the wall to wall rains that we had last night and early this morning. What we're seeing now is much more isolated stuff showing up into parts of the Lexington Metro. We've had a little bit of light rain from time to time over the past few hours into the downtown Lexington area. A little more prominent band of some rain from Stamping Ground to Frankfort and into eastern Kentucky. Showers here have been a little more widespread than what we've been talking about into the central part of the state. And you look to the west and northwest where the air is coming from. Notice how we still have a fair amount of clouds to make their way on into town. But overall, it's a much better uh, weather pattern coming up for Thursday and Friday. Then we focus on a storm system due in town for the weekend. A new hour-by-hour -hour forecast tries to time the exact arrival of the weekend rains, and it's an all-important weekend forecast at that when I come back in a 10-minute uh, time span from now. That it is, Chris. Thank you. It is a way to help dispatchers in an emergency. A new system in Madison County gives people a way to provide extra information about themselves for emergency crews. This can include allergies or medications that you're on. WKYT's Rebecca Smith shows us how this new program works. The new smart 911 system in Madison County allows citizens to sign up online and give information about themselves. A lot of times we won't know your name or your address or where you may be calling from. Roughly 15 to 20 percent of the time, the dispatchers here can't get all the information they need from a caller calling from a cell phone because either they can't talk or are incapacitated in some other way. If they had an intruder in the home and they were in another room and didn't want them to know they were calling 911, they might not be able to speak to the operators. But with Smart 911, you go to the website and fill out your address, personal information, and any allergies or medications you're on. That way, dispatch is armed with all the information they need to get someone to you in a timely manner in a time of potential crisis. We can get as much or as little information as you want us to have. Once they dial 911, we can ping that area, and if it shows your address on John Street, then we would know that you're close to that area, and then that would be listed as your home address. In Madison County, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. For more information about how to sign up for the program, just go to WKYT.com. It began with the theft of a rare and expensive bourbon here in Kentucky. It ended with an entire industry re-examining its security systems, and the end result provides a lesson for all of us. The bourbon business is booming across this country and the world, but sometimes there are problems. 65 cases of the coveted bourbon, Pappy Van Winkle, vanished from a locked room in the Buffalo Trace Distillery back in 2013. Estimated worth more than $100,000. The bourbon industry uh, had somewhat of a lax sort of security system. Some of their procedures and uh, protocols to prevent theft were, weren't really up to date for 2015. It's probably the hottest and most desirable um, bourbon, I'd say, on, on the market right now, if you can find it. Produced in limited quantities and aged for 23 years, Pappy Van Winkle is a rare find and expensive, so any loss is a big hit for the distiller. Law enforcement's theory the theft was an inside job and that the bourbon was being sold on the black market. If someone's willing to sell you a, uh, a bottle of bourbon that usually retails for $50 and they're selling it to you for $15, um, there's a reason. After many months, an anonymous tip led officials to the home of Gilbert Kurtzinger, a longtime employee of the distillery. Sometimes when there's no protocols in place to keep people in check, they, they step out, you know. Unfortunately, in this case, the, the local distillery probably put a little too much trust in a few employees who ultimately um, hurt them financially quite a bit. 
Mailings linked to the case brought postal inspectors into the investigation, and they learned this case was a wake-up call for small businesses. Security is important. You got to hire a good employee. You got to do a background check on, check on that employee, and it helps to do routine background checks on your employees. In other words, there should always be a system of checks and balances in place. Have two people sign off on checks, just not one. You don't have one person working your books. Have multiple people, multiple people overseeing those books. The bourbon heist prompted alcohol businesses across the country to examine their procedures. We actually take inventory three times a week. The owner of Equus Run Vineyard not only keeps close tabs on inventory, she has installed surveillance cameras. When I'm working with even one bottle of product, it might be $80 a bottle. And if I even lost one bottle a week, that adds up very quickly. Most people would not want four or $500 taken out of their paycheck on a weekly basis. The Vineyard has 15 full-time employees who undergo background checks. We do have a, quote, family atmosphere, but I'm still the manager. I'm still the oversight person. And, uh, and I'm not their friend. I'm their manager. A Franklin County grand jury indicted Kurt Singer and eight other people. Investigators say the group stole bourbon from Buffalo Trace and Wild Turkey Distilleries. Police say they recovered five barrels of bourbon behind the home of Kurt Singer. The election is now less than a week away, and the candidates for governor trying to get those last minute votes. Plus, next week, Lexington City leaders will take a look at a proposal to increase minimum wage. Bill Bryant has the bottom line. Good evening. Just a few minutes ago, we released some statewide results from the WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll showing some competitive races and indications that neither party will be sweeping the offices. Now, coming up at six, we'll release the latest numbers in the governor's race with just six days to go in the campaign. Republican Matt Bevan was in Bowling Green and Louisville today. Bevan will be traveling to several other counties as we head toward the last weekend before the election. And Jack Conway, who has an advantage on the airwaves with a heavy load of TV ads. Conway will also be in the air himself for a statewide fly around, making stops in every region of the Commonwealth in the campaign's closing days. Independent Drew Curtis, who has called it an eye opening experience, is reminding those that he's in contact with that they have an option besides the major party candidates. Lexington city leaders will be taking up the proposal to boost the local minimum wage next week. There's a push to increase it to 10. 10 an hour in increments over three years. The measure would not tie future minimum wage increases to the consumer price index and it exempts tipped employees. It takes two readings. A final decision, though, could come in November. At 6 30, CBS News will have the latest from Washington on the race for House Speaker. And again, the results of the Bluegrass poll on the governor's race are coming up at the top of the hour right here. And we have interactive poll results for you at WKYT.com. Bill Bryant. WKYT. Bill, thank you. The Breeders' Cup is just a couple of days away, and this year organizers will kick off the festivities with food from around the world. Today, chefs prepared the food at Sullivan University for the annual Taste of the World event. The event features food from 15 different countries, and celebrity chef Bobby Flay will host Taste of the World. Students and graduates from Sullivan University say today's preparations were a great way for them to learn from the best of the best. It's absolutely intimidating, but uh, also I want to be, you know, looking over their shoulder and see what they're doing because it gives me inspiration to take back to my restaurant and do some dishes that, you know, are inspired by what they're doing. Taste of the World is exclusive to those participating in the Breeders' Cup.